Hey everyone and welcome back to Ontario Cryptids. I'm going to keep the commentary short today. It is such a nice day outside that I'm going to head out into my garden after I tell these four encounter stories. Before I do that though, here's a quick reminder that if you have an encounter story that you would like to share, then please forward your stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I would be honored to share your story with like-minded people. Now sit back and relax as we begin with today's encounters. This encounter story takes place in 2019. However, the location has been withheld. Ever since my daughter was the age of two, she has been able to see things that I or no other family member could see. It was never anything very scary, just little kids she would talk to or what they would make themselves appear as. Fast forward to the year of 2018. My daughter was now eight at the time. We had just moved into a new duplex apartment complex, me, my daughter, my three-year-old son, and everything seems okay at first. Nothing was ever giving me bad vibes or anything like that. Plus, my daughter had not seen a ghost in over a year at this point. After about two months of staying there, I walk into my daughter's room one day and she was talking to and playing with another little girl. I asked her the girl's name and when she started seeing her, and she responded that she met her last week and she is a sad little girl. Now, before I go any further, I just want to point out that I have never felt comfortable with her seeing these things she saw, and I never encourage her to keep talking to them. In all honesty, I would tell her not to interact with them and tell them to leave her alone. But after years of going through it and seeing that nothing was harming her, I just got used to it and I just talked to her about the things she saw because in reality, she couldn't help what she saw. Now back to the story. After she told me about the little girl, I brushed it off and told her to be careful, as always, and to come get me and let me know if anything was ever wrong. After about a week or so, I didn't hear about the little girl anymore, but I didn't think too much of it, because they come and go. Now, also around this time, things started to feel different in the house, especially when my kids would be gone for the weekend. At night, it would feel as though someone was watching me, and I would hear things in the attic. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, there was an attic in the duplex, but I never went up there, ever. Attics have always spooked me out. So one night, after getting the kids into bed, I was watching TV and I must have dozed off because the next thing I knew, I heard my daughter screaming and crying at the top of her lungs. I immediately jumped out of bed thinking someone has broken into the house and I ran straight to my kid's room. When I get to the room and I turn on the light, my daughter is sitting up in bed still screaming but looking in the corner of the other side of the room. I grab my son and her and I ask her what is wrong and she continues to scream and cry while pointing and asking, Mommy, don't you see them? I look to where she was pointing to a blank room and I immediately knew she was seeing something, but this was different. I tried to calm her down and asked her what it is she was seeing. She then began to say, Mommy, they are right there, all of them. Why can't you see them? At that moment, I began to panic, but I never showed my fear in front of her. I kept calm and asked her, what are they doing? She then says, they're playing instruments and laughing at her. She also says, they keep smiling at me, and she shouted at them to leave me alone. Then she finally looks at me and asks me, what does 666 mean? At that moment, it was like my whole body went into protection mode. You would think I was scared, 
but I immediately became enraged at the fact that my innocent child was being taunted by childish evil entities. I grabbed my kids and rushed to my room and locked the door and did the only thing I knew to do. I prayed and called my cousin who came over to bless the house. After almost two hours of my child being scared and me trying to tell her nothing is going to harm her because she is protected by Jesus, she finally fell asleep in my bed. You would think that after a night like that, that everything would stop, but no. It seemed as if I pissed one of them off. So while my kids were sleeping in my bed, I had just fallen asleep when something told me to wake up. I immediately woke up and for the first time ever, I saw a dark figure gliding over to where my daughter was sleeping. And before they could bend down to touch her, I shouted at them to leave her the F alone. Yeah, I lost my mind because the figure came over me so fast, but I grabbed my Bible from under my pillow and started saying the Lord's Prayer, and it went away. After that night, I moved out and left all the furniture because I didn't want anything to attach to the furniture, and we never went back. For this one, the date is unknown, but we're going to Okfiski County, Oklahoma, and the nearest town is Welty. When I was growing up, we lived near a town called Welty in Oklahoma. It's not really much of a town, just a tiny store, some churches, and a lot of farms. We lived off a main road close to an area called Maccabee, which is also nothing but farms and a cemetery and not even considered a town very middle of nowhere. My family told a lot of creepy stories about this place, especially having to do with orbs and weird deer. I do have memories of seeing orbs floating over the trees, and I have no idea what those were, but I never personally saw anything else. My dad has always been a skeptic, and never chimed in on these stories. He has Alzheimer's and has a great memory of the past, but horrible short-term. The other day, he was telling me how much he loved living out there and wished he could still live there, and I brought up the orbs and the creepy stories my family always shared. He agreed that they were always creeped out there, but then he told me he actually saw something really odd once. He told me one night he was sitting on the porch by himself and a man ran through our yard wearing what looked like a deer head. Not just the antlers, but like he had a deer's head. He just ran through and continued on down the pitch black road. My dad didn't know what to think of it. He just told me he thought people out there had too much time on their hands. My mom and brother also saw what they said was a deer walking upright all the way down the road. I know deers do this, but they said it just kept walking like that in the middle of the road. My aunt also said they passed a man who was wearing a deer's head on the road one night. There aren't streetlights in this area, so he was just out there in the dark, alone, just standing there. For this next encounter, both the date and location have been withheld. I could go a little deeper into this story, but to keep it short, my niece, who was four, walked up to my mother and said, I know your mom. The problem is that my mom's mom died in the 80s. She said, yes, I know your mom, Allie. And then she said she talks to her. Not only is that an extremely strange thing to say, but she's only four. Also, Nobody has ever talked to my niece about my grandmother, and nobody except for my grandma's friends ever called her Allie. So nobody has even said the name or referred to her as Allie since the 80s. This happened a while ago, but the reason I bring it up now is because my sister just told us that she said the other day that she talked to Allie's sister. Also, a couple of weeks ago, they were at the house, and she looks at my sister and goes, Someone needs help at the grocery store, Mom. Someone needs help. They didn't call the grocery store or act on it, 
but they're starting to think that she can really connect with people on different planes. Anyways, it's pretty wild, and I was wondering if anyone else knows someone who has had this experience with their kids. This is going to be the last story of the day. Again, the date and the location have been withheld. My ex-wife thought she was a psychic or had some kind of clairvoyance or paranormal abilities. We would kind of have joke about it, and even now I kind of look back on it cynically and chalk it up to her wanting attention. But there was this one time that I still wonder about. Charlie had never met her great-grandfather. She had heard a lot of stories about him, though. He was a tall, angry man that always wore a three-piece suit and loved to beat his wife and children. He was by all accounts a mean, violent alcoholic. He died destitute and was reported to be buried in a particular cemetery in a nearby city. Being a fan of cemeteries, we would visit them frequently, often to take photographs or just to explore the Memento Mori. One afternoon, we were exploring a large cemetery across the street from the cemetery where her great-grandfather was supposed to be. She had often talked about trying to find his grave, but no one seemed to know where it was. I believe we had gone looking a few times, but came up empty-handed. As we were driving slowly through the other cemetery across the street from where he was reportedly buried, Charlie, who was looking out the passenger window, suddenly yelled out, Stop! Stop the car! I stopped on the brake and she undid her seatbelt, opened the door and walked hurriedly into an area dense with headstones. I watched her walk in about 20 feet and then stopped. She was staring at a headstone. I put the car in park and got out and walked over to join her. There was his grave. He was buried next to a friend or distant relative in the other half of a double plot. Apparently when he died there was no money to bury him and there was a vacancy thanks to a friend or relative that had a double plot that they ended up with in the divorce. So that meant that there was basically a free hole in the ground that they could stick him in, and the guy who was in the other half didn't mind sharing the eternal resting place since his ex-wife was going to be buried with the postman or whomever. Charlie said that she didn't see the headstone from the car. I believed her about that because she had terrible vision. Uncorrected, her left eye was so bad that she couldn't recognize my face across the restaurant table if she covered her right eye. She hated wearing glasses, so she rarely did if anyone was around. She said that she just had a feeling. I couldn't see the name on the headstone from the road, and my vision was excellent at the time. Well, that's going to be it for today. I hope you all enjoy these encounter stories today, but I had to look up if deers can stand on their hind legs, and apparently they can, and often do while trying to reach, a, uh, reach leaves uh, on the trees to eat. What I found interesting about that one story was that they weren't seeing a deer uh, walking down the street. They were seeing a man with the head of a deer walking down the street. Very strange. But I wonder if the man had clothes on. Hmm. Okay, I hope you all head out and enjoy the weather wherever you are. Because I know here in T.O. all I see is sun and blue skies. So, if these stories reminded you of an encounter that you may have had and would like to share, then please forward your stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I would be honored to share your story on this channel. Thank you all for listening until the end. I truly appreciate it. Please hit the like button on your way out and smash the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Have a great weekend and I hope to see you all next week right here on Ontario Cryptids.